morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you glad to be here this morning? How many of you glad this Because this was a rough week for some people, and, and the numbers have been up, so they say, but there's no number greater than the number of our God. Because he is Jehovah Shaboeth. He is the Lord of the angel armies, the, num the Lord of innumerable angels. And so while the numbers may be going up, they'll never get greater than our God's army. Hallelujah. We serve a great God, don't we? How many of you know we serve a great God? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul is going to make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Since he spared you another day, you might as well praise him. Since you're not in the hospital, you might as well praise him. And if you are in the hospital, praise him anyway. You might as well. He gave you another chance, right? You might as well praise him. And he saved you for some reason. The reason why you're here is to give him glory. The reason why you're here is to give him honor. And millions didn't make it to wine and say, but you are the one of the ones who did. So since you made it... Just praise God with praise our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I, I'm so thankful to be here through danger seen and unseen. And I know some of you got some testimonies from this week, how it was hard. But God brought you through. And he brought your family through. Am I right about it? And he kept you when you shouldn't have really been kept in your own strength. Am I, am I right about it? I know he kept me. He, I don't know why, but he kept me. But since he did, I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor, and I'm going to give him praise. There's no God like our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Before we go any further, we always like to offer a word of prayer. Uh, the family that prays together stays together. And so we consider you our family, whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you're online through Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, wherever you are, we consider you our family. We are one in Christ. And so we want to go through the throne to the throne of grace this morning before we go any further. Father God, in the name of Lord Jesus, we come before your presence this morning. And we don't take your presence for, for granted, God. We are thankful unto you, God. We're thankful for the provision you made for us this week. We're thankful that we're clothed, that old folks say they're in our right mind. We're thankful, God, we, did, we didn't get up and put our shoes on our head, God, but we got up with our right mind. We thank you, God, that even though we might have gone through, we did just that, went through, God. And I thank you for bringing us through, and I thank you for your word, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that when we're going through, God, we got that lamp on our feet to keep keep going and I thank you God I pray for those who are at the crossroads this morning God who who don't know what to do God the life has gotten so hard for them that they don't know what to do I pray right now God that you give them peace and give them a strategy bring them out and bring them to you father and for those of of, of, of in the body who are suffering in their body God I pray right now that you will send your healing anointing send it like never before God we know that we can say it here because your word says you sent your word and your word healed them God so we are sending your word through the airways we are sending your word to the hospitals we're sending your word to the house each individual house we're sending your word touch heal deliver set free as only you can God and then for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones we pray Lord God that you would comfort uh, send comfort to those send comfort God you are the God that comforted us when we experienced loss that same comfort your word says, well, I, I express and send it to those who are experiencing loss. And then, God, I pray right now for those who are experiencing addiction, those who are experiencing addiction, and they don't know how to get out, and they don't know how to get over, and they don't know how to get through. I pray right now for understanding of those, uh, those people. But I also pray right now, Lord God, that you would break, that you would break addictions, God, Break additions, addictions, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out with a testimony that if it had not been for you who was on our side, we don't know where we would be. God, I praise you right now. I don't know why, but I'm calling for families to come back.
back together in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sons to come back home. Daughters to come back home. And be respectful. I am praising you, God, for you are bringing families back together. Long lost families that haven't been speaking to us, each other. In the name of Jesus, your anointing is bringing them back together. In the, I sense it. I sense it in the word, oh God, that you you are a restorer of the breach, God. And the, of the families that have been broken apart, Lord God, by any means, Father, you're greater. Bring them back together. Restore them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. And as we enter into your word this morning, God, bring a word that will be transformational, God. That the word will bring light in dark situations, God. And that the word will bring answers, Lord God, and be relevant to those who come to hear a word from you. I praise you. I glorify you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This, this week I was uh, studying and just, I do more than study. I believe that we're in a season and God confirmed it. We're in a season where we just don't study, but we really got to eat the word of God. We got to eat the word of God. And so he took me to Genesis uh, chapter 37. And we're just going to read this morning and see where God is uh, taking us. And, you know, I want to use a topic that's really familiar, everybody knows. But it's about the story of, of Joseph, and it's about his life from the pit to the palace. And God is, is, is moving even in the pandemic. And so I, I, I want to, to use as a topic from the pandemic to the palace, from the pandemic to the palace. And when I looked at the life of Joseph, uh, I saw that he had gone through some things, but there was prophetic word that came through his experiences that caused him to be triumphant. And I believe that now that with things going on, we need a word that's not just going to soothe our intellect, but we need a word that's going to bring us from pandemic thinking to our place in the palace. I know that there, we all have a place that this is not our place right now. So w what I began to do was look at the life of Joseph, and in, it took me to Genesis. And I love the book of Genesis because it is uh, the book of beginnings. And I looked at Genesis, the 37th chapter. That's the first place we're going, Genesis 30. Seven, and I want to pick up verse number three. Genesis is a book of first beginnings, and hermeneutically speaking, uh, when you have what we call the law of first mentions, that means that if, if it's mentioned fir first, even in Genesis, then anything after that uh, can be validated because it was mentioned first. So we're looking at the life of Joseph, and we can see that the things that Joseph went through can be relevant to our lives because they're first mentioned in Genesis. Amen? So in, Joseph, in Genesis 37, around verse 3, it says, uh, Now Israel, who is Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a distinctive multicolored tunic. So we see that this Jacob, he is the, the Jacob from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we say, see that this Jacob has a past because he is the one who tricked his brother, his, trick, his twin brother Esau, out of his birthright. And so we see that here he walks on the scene, and he has a son who is his favorite. And out of his 12 sons, Joseph is the one who is his favorite. So much so that he makes Joseph what is called a coat of many colors. And in, in, in our previous teaching, we talked about mantles. And if you will, this would be considered a mantle. 
And so Joseph wears this mantle, and it has many, co many, many colors. And the thing that makes it significant is that the other brothers had coats, but they were not as long as Joseph coat, Joseph's coat was. Didn't have many, as many colors as Joseph's was. And so Joseph's coat was that which set him apart from his brothers. As a matter of fact, through Joseph's coat, you could see him coming from afar off. And if you do indulge me for a minute, I would think that that, that coat made him a target. <laughs> while, while, while many think that it's great that he has a coat and it's, it, it, it's great that he's favored and it's great that, that his father loves him, but when the father loves you and favors you and, and anoints you for a particular task, you automatically become a target for anybody that can see, even a target for your friends. You begin to see who your friends are and who your enemies are just by the fact that you wear this coat of many colors. And, 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 and as we talked about before, that coat, that, that, man, that, that mantle protected him. Remember, Elisha caught Elijah's mantle. And so here Joseph is catching, uh, has a mantle on him that God himself has given to him. And this mantle says, I'm favored. Can someone say, I'm favored? I'm favored. Even though I don't look like it, I'm favored. <laughs> yeah, you know why I know I'm favored? Because the enemy is always after me. <laughs> That, that if the enemy is always after you, you must be favored. There is something on you that has made you a target for his wrath. But you're in good company. Someone shout, I'm in good company. And so here he is. Uh, he has this coat of many colors, but he has this anointing, but he's immature. <laughs> Some people can be anointed, but so immature. See, they can lay hands on one person, and they, and they get up, and they, they walk in, and then they take the glory for themselves. Because they are in, you're gifted, but immature. Does uh, anybody know anybody like that? Maybe I'm not talking to anybody on this line. But, but sometimes when God begins to use you, you forget to give him the glory. And you're gifted all right. You can sing all right. You can pray all right. You can preach all right. You can even move a crowd. Uh, but you are immature. <laughs> so that's where we find Joseph. He is in a place where he's anointed but immature. <laughs> uh -huh. Just because you know about three or four scriptures and you anointed, but you use them for your own good, your own purpose. You may just be immature. Yeah, and I, I know people that can preach up one side of you and down the other side, but they can't hold their tongue. I, I know some people that can, can move a crowd, but they can't keep their pants up. I know some people that know the word left and right, but they cuss like a savior, anointed, but immature. Yeah. Mm. So we see that he is gifted and he begins to have dreams, and the dreams that God gives him are great dreams. They, they're pa fantastic dreams. He dreams and tells his brothers that I had a dream that y'all were going to bow down to me. <laughs> and he tells his parents, I, I had a dream, too, that you were going to bow down to me. Immature, because you don't tell everybody your <laughs> dreams. Can, can I say that? Can I say the only way the enemy finds out what you're going to do is when you open your mouth. <laughs> the mature people learn when to say it and when not to say it. <laughs> they learn that you can think what you want to about me, but doesn't mean that I got to come to, the, to, to, to make you uh, approve of me. So many times we look for approval when we are gifted. So many times we look for the approval from those who are not gifted to validate what God is doing in us. I, I believe that that's what he was looking for, validation. After all, he was one of the youngest of all of the brothers, and he had to let them know, y'all going to bow down to me. No mention of God anywhere. And I believe God heard that, and he became a target because he had to go through the process. He had to go through the process. 
can you just tell somebody we have to be processed? So we see here that he is anointed, but his anointed self ends up in slavery. <laughs> He's anointed, and his brothers have put him into a place where he is sold into slavery. And then from slavery, he ends up in Potiphar's house. So it says to me that when you are gifted, your gift has to be processed through slavery ooh, and through lies. Oh, nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to hear that your gift got to got to sustain you through every lie that is ever told. Can I help somebody? The minute you stand up and you are anointed, the mouths begin to lie on you. You hear lies that you ain't even know that anybody could even think of. This is the place he's in slavery, and part of his wife has lied on him. <laughs> Where, who, am I speaking to any, anybody? Because you came out anointed, didn't you? And then the first hit, you was like, what? what? Wait, I thought I'm anointed. Called for this. Why? Why, Why is this happening to me? So he, he, he ends up in prison because of the lie that was told on him. And yet he still has favor. You got to understand that the mantle of favor, even though they took his coat, he was still anointed. Even though they took your car, you're still anointed. Even though they took your home, you're still anointed. Even though you fell four times, you're still anointed. So you're just an anointed person who has fallen. But the anointing does not leave when you fall. The anointing does not leave when you end up in prison. The anointing does not leave when you make a mistake. The anointing is still there. You can take everything that called you to be different from everybody else, but you're still anointed. You are anointed to lose something things and you are anointed to get it back that's the difference in a coat and in an anointing so he ends up in prison ah, and in prison the bible says I'm, I'm going to take you to, 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 to scripture but in prison the bible says that number one he was a dreamer and he met two other dreamers in prison now, he's a dreamer. He meets a cupbearer and a baker, and they're both dreamers. See, even if you try to get away from your gift, God will always put you back in a place where people like you need your gift. I don't know about you, but even when you thought you failed so miserably, you'll look around and God has put you in a place where everybody needs your gift. The people that you're around need your gift. You thought your marriage failed, he's going to put you around people that need to hear about your marriage to help them. Your, your kids messed up, he's going to put you around people that want to know about. You, you just you can't walk away from the anointing. Here he is, he walks into prison, in prison, got favor on his life. And the cupbearer has a dream, and the baker has a dream. My God. So the cupbearer tells him his dream, and the baker tells him his dream. Now, all three of them are in prison. It seems to me that I wouldn't be dreaming if it's going to line me up in prison. But that's just a, a side note. But you got to learn how to keep your dreams to yourself. But this is the process that God took him to because he's now in prison with other dreamers. <laughs> let, let, me, let me say, you're not the Lone Ranger. You're not the, if you look to your left or you look to your right, there are people that's sitting on your row. There are people that's on this live that have gone through the same thing that you are going through. Matter of fact, they're in the same prison that you are in, and it's because of the gifting on their life. So the enemy wants you to think you're by yourself, but God says if you look to your left and look to your right, they're going through, their gifting is being perfected just like yours. So here he is in prison, and he and they ask him to interpret their dreams. And he interprets the butcher's dream. 
and the cupbearer's dream and the baker's dream. And the baker's dream didn't turn out so well. He began to tell him in three days you're going to die. See, that's the prophetic part of the gift that y'all don't want to tell the truth. That's called the tell the truth ministry. <laughs> he, he, he ends up having to tell him the truth and it comes to pass. But the cupbearer, he tells him in three days, you, your dream means that in three days you're going to get out of here and you're actually going to be promoted. So he gets out and he is promoted to the cupbearer. But he says, while you're in prison, he says, I'm going to interpret your dream. But when you get out, when you get promoted, don't forget about me. Man, that thing brought some, some things home. He said, I, I, I'm going to give you this word, but when you get out, he said, he began to tell uh, the cupbearer, I'm in here unjustly, just like you are. But when you get out, don't forget me. And so we move to chapter 41, and we see the same Joseph is in jail two years after he is given the cupbearer the prophecy. Ah, part of the process to move into the next level is that when your gift is used, people will forget you. <laughs> can, I, can I just go home right now? There, there, there are times when your gift is going to be used and, you know, you, you bailed someone out and, and you prayed all night for somebody and, and you went when nobody else would go and you stood, you stood the test of time and now they don't even know you. <laughs> God is processing your gift because you got to know that your gift doesn't mean that they got to do something for you. See, sometimes we think that when we get a gift, that means that I'll do this for you and you do this for me. The gifts and callings are without repentance. That means that I can give you a word without any expectation that you owe me an allegiance. <laughs> that means I can take you to put groceries in your house and you owe me nothing. <laughs> that means that I can come and get your kids from school and take care of them and you owe me nothing. It's called processing the gift. Yeah. Ah, ah. And I know we don't want to hear that part, but here he is two years later in jail. The cupbearer done run on. I've been promoted. He is all doing his own thing. He's, being, uh, 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 he's in a new position and he forgets about Joseph. You ever been there? Anybody ever done something? You, you gave your last to the person act like they don't know you now? Maybe this, maybe I'm talking to the lights in here. But have you, have you ever gone and done something for somebody else's family when your family would really could use what you did for their family and they act like you were supposed to do it? God says, your gift is just being processed. I'm processing your motives. I'm processing it. I'm processing it. Because you don't want your gift to be unprocessed because it's an immature gift. Yeah, you, 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 don't know, you don't know the feeling of giving someone something, that giving them your last, and you go home and not eat because they needed to eat, and they walk away and don't know you. Can someone say, process my gift, God? Uh, I've seen it all the time. People just get, they get delivered. The deliverance ministry is all on the floor with them. And, you know, shoes off and everything is going everywhere. And they get up and run on back and do what they were doing before. It's just like the person didn't just pour out their whole ministry to help them get free. But guess what? It was called processing And so we see that in Genesis chapter 41. Woo. Verse 1 says, now it happened in the Amplified at the end of two full years <laughs> that Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile. And lo, there came up out of the Nile seven healthy cows, sleek and handsome and fat, and they grazed in the reed grass in marshy pasture. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the Nile, ugly and gaunt and raw-boned, and stood by the fat cows on the bank of the Nile. Then the ugly and 
gaunt and raw-boned cows ate up the seven sleek and fat cows. Then Pharaoh awoke. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let me read some more. Then he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain came up on a single stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven ears of grain, thin and dried up by the east wind, spotted, sprouted after then. Then the thin ears swallowed the seven plump ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and it was a dream. Wow, God speaks to us through the dreams. So when we see this is Pharaoh is having a dream. So now here's Joseph. He's a dreamer in chapter 37. He runs into a cupbearer and, a, and a, a, a baker. They're two dreamers. And now this is a fourth dreamer he runs into by the name of Pharaoh. <laughs> Remember, your gift and your callings, number one, are without repentance. But they'll put you. <laughs> before great men. Remember, as long as you keep operating your gift and letting God perfect it, it's going to put you. He didn't ask to become before Pharaoh. It was placed before Pharaoh. Here's Pharaoh having a dream. And to, to move on down, I don't want to have Bible study here, but you need to read this because there's prophetic insight as to what's going on today in the pandemic. Good God Almighty, some help me. He, Pharaoh says, I had a dream of seven fat cows and then seven thin cows. And the thin cows ate up the fat cows and they still was hungry. And so he says, is there one here that can interpret this dream? And the Bible says that he called for the magicians, the magicians in, in, in his court and wanted them to interpret the dream. But they couldn't interpret the dream. See, this is what I know, that when God gives something, nobody else can interpret what God gives. Can I say that one more time? You may go to Miss Clara, Miss Clara, whoever the, the, the palm reader is, and you might go to tarot cards, and you might go to every space, but there is a place where God speaks to his people, and only him and that person knows what the real deal is. Oh, they're looking at me this morning. Oh, y'all don't like that. Uh, yeah, he went to the magicians, and magicians said, I don't even know what that means. But guess who overheard the conversation? The cupbearer. <laughs> Look at the providence of God. He places the cupbearer in ear range of Pharaoh who was having a dream. Wow. God works all things together for your good. He'll place persons in, in right where they need to be in your life so that now you can next move to the next level of whatever God is saying. Come on, you don't even know people know each other, but they got your name going in the atmosphere and the names that they're putting is, oh yeah, I know her. Oh, I know him. You ought to try him. In this season of the pandemic, there are going to be names that are put in the atmosphere that have been in waiting. Come on, that's prophetic now. There are names there. You've been waiting for your break. You've been wondering when it's your time. You've been wondering when it's your season. You've been in the place with your gift being processed, and now your name is being floated in the atmosphere. Can I say that again? Somebody's name is being floated in the atmosphere. And here comes the cupbearer. And the cupbearer says, he uses this opportunity to tell his story to Pharaoh. He said, yeah, I, when we were in prison, because I was placed in prison unfairly, he said nothing about Joseph being there unfairly. He uses this opportunity to tell Pharaoh that, yeah, I, I, I was there unfairly, and I, they treated me wrong. But while I was there, there was this little, little boy by the name of Joseph. All of a sudden, he's just this young boy by the name of Pharaoh, this one who saved his life. He's been relegated to now just a nobody. <laughs> wow, look at God. So what does Pharaoh do? Pharaoh says, well, bring him to me. They cleaned Joseph up and put him before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh tells him his, his dream about the seven fat cows. And, 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 and Joseph begins to interpret this dream as seven years of abundance and seven years of lack. Somebody need to get that in the spirit. That he was talking that there we are in a season of abundance, but we were going to go through a season of lack. And so, so he talked about grain 
grain and storing up grain. But God showed me something else that in this pandemic, I said, God, why did he dream of cows? He says, because cows provide milk and they provide meat. <laughs> what? He said, cows provide milk and cows provide meat. And then he took me to Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Wow, God. And let, let, let's, let's turn there and we'll go back. He, he took me to the fifth chapter of Hebrews around the 13th verse. And it says, for everyone who lives on milk is indoctrinally inexperienced and unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a spiritual infant. Then he said, but solid food is for the spiritually mature, whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. The King James Version says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But a strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Wow. So he's talking about the word, that there were going to be seven years of fat word. Uh, come on now. Yeah, there are going to be seven years huh, in, in, in Egypt where everybody ate this. Not only did they drink milk, milk, but they moved to the meat. They moved to maturity. And it was stored up because of what's coming next. Can I tell you that you have been drinking milk and moved to meat because you're storing up the thing that needs to take you through this pandemic? Uh, dun, dun, dun. He said, because there's going to come a day when there, those thin cows represent thin word and thin milk and, and no word and no, no milk and no meat. And I'm calling for those who know the word of God, who have lived this word of God, who know righteousness. And the word of God is just not intellectual to them. But they know that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. They know that therefore there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk, we know that word. Those who have applied the word of God that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper and any tongues that rise, those who know the word of God is blessed are they who mourn for they shall be confident. Those who know the word of God, those who have walked this word, that have lived this word, have served this word. He said, you, you're mature. You're mature. You know this word. When hard times come, you know the word. You know that but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run. And they wonder why, why are you so happy? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why are you not fainting about the, about the pandemic? Because I have got thick and mature word in me. They move from the milk of the word where they just say Jesus well. Yeah. They, they move from the milk of the word where they're getting back at each other. Uh, they stop talking about their haters all the time because everybody got those. But they move to some revelatory word about where we're going next. They move to this. Some of you are weighty in the spirit. And guess what else God said to me? He said, some of you are frustrated because you're in a place where you're being served milk and you want meat. Babies who want to move from milk to meat start crying. If you're complaining about where you are, that's because you're not being satisfied with the word of the meat of God. 
Can I, can I say that? Uh, can I say that one more time? Uh, the, the word El Shaddai means many breasted ones. And what happens is that when you become, you get on the breast, the minute you develop teeth, the mother moves you away or smacks you because not only are you hurting her, but you're hurting your own growth. That's why God has to push us away because we are hurting his name. And we're stunting our growth. There's nothing crazier than to see a baby with a mouthful of teeth with the, the, the breast in their mouth. And some of the church looks like that, sucking on the same A word that it's the same O word that means really for it's for those who don't know him. Yeah. That's why God said, you got to preach what I give you. Even though people look at you like they don't understand, they'll get it because it's weighty. Some of you are moving to weighty word. Yeah. You know how to love your neighbor. You know how to not curse. You, you, you know all of that. You, all, you know all of that. But give me some revelation. Where you taking me, God? How do I get from here to there? How do I get close enough to you that I can hear your voice? How do I experience you on such a level that only you and I understand? I'm only talking, I know the, the atmosphere is going to get thin right here. But there's some of us who've been saved so long that we're not going to keep doing the same, yes, Jesus loved me song. We know he loved us. We know that he has a purpose for our life and a plan, but we want to know what it is, how we get there, and how, how can we be used. Yeah, you got to move off the breast. Can you, can you tell somebody, move off the breast? Yeah, yeah. Pharaoh, see, I see seven fat years with plenty of word, plenty of meat, plenty of milk. But I see a time is going to come and when the word of God is going to be scarce. The scripture speaks about that. There's a time coming when the word of God is going to be scarce. Wow. And we are entering into that season because what is he doing? He's shaking up the church. And those who want a word will be those who are in his presence. And the Bible says he interpreted for Joseph, and Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh, and, and here Egypt starts to prosper. And Joseph has two sons, and I'm almost there. And the name of his first son in 41, 40, 44th chapter of Genesis, verse 51, he named his firstborn son Manasseh which means to forget. Wow. And here we come with the word before we go. It means God has made me forget all my trouble and hardship. Can, can I get a... Uh, yeah. Through this processing, you're going to forget all your troubles and your hardship. And then verse 52 says, and he had a second son, and he named his second son Ephraim, which meant fruitfulness. For God has caused me to be fruitful and very successful in the land of my suffering. Uh, see, they, they, they didn't get that word. They, uh, Elder Rico, they didn't get that word. Can you back it up and make it, make it plain again? He said the first name was God, was to forget the second son's name was fruitfulness. He's going to make me fruitfulness through the pandemic. Can I, can I speak to four people? He's about to make you fruitful in the pandemic. Can, can, I, can I say he's going to make you forget all the suffering that you went through to get here? And, and I thought it was crazy, not so crazy, but he named his first son forget because he understand how the cupbearer forgot about him. 
<laughs> he said, I'm going to forget the thing that you did to me. I'm going to forget how you treated me. I'm going to forget the circumstances. I'm going to forget the pain and the hurt that I went through. I'm going to forget all of that. He named his son Manasseh. He named this other one fruitfulness. God says in this, don't, don't forget other people are locking up businesses, but my kingdom is going to open up businesses. While everyone else is failing, people in the kingdom are going to be fruitful. Someone shout fruitful. Good God. Ah, can, I, can, I, can I say that that's a word for me if y'all don't want it? It's going to make me forget all the sleepless nights. He's going to make me forget everything that I lost, everything that was taken away, all the embarrassment. He's going to make me forget all of that. Every time I close my eyes, I'm going to just dream of lovely things. I'm not going to bring it over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm not going to have to go down that same road again. Hallelujah in this house. God says, I'm making you forget. And then I'm going to make you fruitful. That was the story of his life. If gift, whatever happens, for the gift to be processed, he had to forget and then become fruitful. But in chapter 48, he's reconciled with his daddy. He becomes reconciled with his daddy. Jacob comes on the scene. You got to read the story. He becomes reconciled with his daddy. And his daddy, remember, I started this out by saying that Jacob was a trickster. He tricked his twin brother out of his birthright, out of his destiny. So what's happened here is that Jacob comes back on the scene by providence of God. His eyesight is dim, and he wants to meet Joseph's two boys, his grandchildren. And they lead him over to him in chapter 48. Read it for yourself. And he begins to confer a blessing. A blessing on the oldest one and a blessing on the youngest one. So Joseph takes his sons and brings them to Joseph. For Joseph to, brings them to Jacob so Jacob can bless him. And the Bible says that when they got close enough, Jacob turned his hands and switched his hands. So he blessed the younger one over the older one. What is God saying? <laughs> He's going to make you fruitful, then you're going to forget. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> You ain't got to forget yet because that thing that you're trying to forget is not going to process you. I'm going to make you fruitful, and then you're going to forget about everything that you went through. Come on now. Come on, who am I speaking to? God says, in this pandemic, you're going to be fruitful. Then you're going to forget about how you got there because it hurt you so bad. Woo-hoo. <laughs> but you got to go through the process. Got to go through the process. He was, he was making that generational curse, a generational blessing. Remember, because he messed up in his life. But when his grandkids come on the scene, it turns from a generational curse to a generational blessing. Oh, my God. The word of God to you is that in the pandemic, your gift is being processed so that you can be fruitful and forget about every hurt that got you through the process. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love the Lord this morning because he heard my cry. I'm thankful that he allowed me to come to the place of fruitfulness, even in the pandemic. <laughs> even when others are falling by the wayside, you're still strong because of the weightiness of the word that you're now getting and receiving and eating. So I like to offer you, you need, to, you need to be able to hold on to something through this process that you're going through. And many of you don't even know it. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going through a process. All of the stuff that's happening to you is processing you back to Jesus Christ. Those of you who fell away, this is your process. God didn't forget about you. He's bringing you through this process. And so I'm asking you this morning, if that's you, if that is you, if you need to go through the process, we're asking you to 
first accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Amen. Repeat after me, Father God. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins. I ask that you come into my heart. Sit on the throne of my heart. I release and relinquish control to you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he was crucified, dead, and buried. And that the third day he rose again for me. And now I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we ask that you contact us through uh, either email or on our website or even on this Facebook page because we want to walk. We don't just want to leave you there. We want to walk you through to this thing called relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And, 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 and we want you to know, too, many people who have been asking, how do we sow into this word? You will see it. You will see it across the screen, how you can sow into the church, how you can sow. You, you got to sow somewhere. You got to sow somewhere because whatever you sow now is going to bring forth a hundredfold because of the pandemic. Amen. Amen. Give God glory in the house. Give God glory in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.